So welcome to the first vodcast of Unit 3. In Unit 3 here, we're going to be looking specifically at uh, stars. And in this first vodcast, we're going to be looking at what exactly is a star, uh, what's going on inside to make it a star, and uh, how did they form in the first place. Now, how they formed is, sh uh, or should be at least, a review from last unit, because we talked about, in the Nebula theory, how stars form, uh, or excuse me, how solar systems form, which is pretty much the same thing here. They first start out as a nebula. Uh, we call them molecular clouds. All right, they're just the same thing. They're large clouds of, of gas and dust, mostly hydrogen and helium. All right, kind of like these. We have the California Nebula. We've got the Red Rectangular Nebula. We've got the Witch Head Nebula. All right, or we have M16 here, which is known as the Eagle Nebula. Now, Eagle Nebula is kind of cool because we can look down here at the talon, and uh, if we just look at these, these are known as the pillars of creation. Very, very cool uh, pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope. And again, we start out as a big cloud of gas and dust. But something happens, and that gas and dust starts to collapse. All right, gravity starts to pull it closer and closer and tighter and tighter. And if we look at the edge of these, uh, these pillars here. Here's a close-up. We can see that there's little spikes. There's a bunch of them. All right. And if we look at the edge of those spikes, we can actually see uh, infant pictures, basically, of, of solar systems about to form or just forming. Right. We can see that gas uh, that's swirling around it that will eventually form into the planets. And we can see in the interior of these uh, stars that are just about to form or uh, stars that are just forming. But the question is, at what point does that interstellar cloud of gas and dust actually turn into a star? So it gets to the question really, what is a star? Well, again, that bulge in the center. All right, Gravity is trying to crush it smaller and smaller. And when that happens, the temperature inside of that cloud of gas and dust starts to rise. And the point at which a star actually turns into uh, a star is when it's hot enough for the interior to start to go through a process known as nuclear fusion, all right, which happens in the core. Now, what is this nuclear fusion? All right, what is going on so that it, uh, we know what is a star? All right, nuclear fusion is a process all right, that takes lightweight nuclei and turns them into heavier ones. Stars are basically large chemical factories. All right, They're taking hydrogen, which is the lightest uh, element, and they are combining them uh, with other atoms, usually hydrogen, into heavier ones like helium. All right, So in our star, uh, and most stars, you have hydrogen running into another hydrogen atom, and that produces helium and a lot of energy. All right. And we'll get to why it does that in a bit. But this happens if a uh, cloud of gas and dust has enough mass to crush its core so that it reaches a temperature of 10 million degrees Kelvin. Now, why does it need 10 million degrees Kelvin? Imagine these little uh, hydrogen atoms like magnets. All right. And if you take two magnets, and try to bring them close together, uh, assuming that you have the same poles facing each other. We know that like poles repel each other, and it requires a little bit of a push to get them close to one another, but they don't want to be. Same thing with uh, the atoms inside the sun. All right. They are charged. They are not wanting to be next to each other. So in order to get them close enough, so that this process over here, nucleus fusion, where they combine to make one larger atom. All right, in order for that to happen, you have to slam them together very, very hard so that this uh, electromagnetic repulsion, this idea of like charges repelling one another, is overcome and other charges, or excuse me, other forces inside the atom take over. So again, this is like taking two like uh, poles of a magnet and trying to push them together. 
It's very hard to do, which is why it requires such high temperatures. Temperature is just describing how fast the atom is moving, and you've got to move them really fast together to slam and stick together. Right. Once this happens, all right, the sun kicks on this nuclear uh, fusion, all right, this nuclear furnace, and it basically explodes on the inside. All right, an atom bomb, uh, or more specifically, a hydrogen bomb that we have is basically like a mini sun. It's this huge explosion where hydrogen fuses into helium and produces that big explosion. Well, that is going on inside of a sun. But why doesn't it blow itself to pieces or why doesn't gravity just crush it? It's because of this idea called hydrostatic equilibrium. All right, our sun is in hydrostatic equilibrium because that crushing force of gravity all right, is trying to crush it into a, a point in space. But at the same time, nuclear fusion inside of the sun is pushing outwards, and it's balancing this. Now that inside uh, internal pressure is caused by the electromagnetic repulsion. It's caused by the radiative pressure um, of the light that's being produced inside of the sun and other things. But the idea here is that they're balanced. So what exactly is going on inside the sun? Originally, people thought, well, maybe it's just like a big piece of wood that got caught on fire and has been burning. Well, that uh, wouldn't last nearly as long as it should. All right, just a few thousand years. We know it's been burning for millions of years, if not, uh, excuse me, billions. So what uh, is actually happening is this nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion, uh, there's about 350 million tons of hydrogen slamming into another 350 million tons of hydrogen to make helium. Now, what you would expect to see is 700 million tons of uh, helium coming out. But in reality, only 695 million tons is being produced. So where's that other 5 million tons? All right, it's missing 5 million tons every second. And that's where Einstein comes in with this famous little equation, E equals mc squared. Einstein describes energy uh, is basically mass, and mass is basically energy. Mass, all right, if we want to think of mass and energy uh, in terms of money, energy is like cash. It's uh, uh, easily spent. You can do things with it. Mass is like taking your money and storing it in the bank. All right, you can change uh, forms from cash into money in the bank or withdraw that money from the bank and turn it into cash so you can spend it. But the thing here is mass is more like trying to store your money as gold. All right, a little bit of gold is worth a lot of money. And that's where the speed of light comes in. Speed of light, the fastest thing uh, in the universe, the speed limit, it's 300,000 kilometers a second. All right, that is a large number. And it's that large number squared. So in essence, what is happening inside the sun to produce all of that light and all of that energy it's taking that 5 million tons of mass and multiplying by this large number and getting an incredible amount of energy out. All right. And th that energy is released as photons, which will be important later on. But the hydrogen is actually being turned into helium. And when it loses a little bit of mass, all right, that little bit of mass produces a huge amount of energy. Now, how much energy? This is where the math is really cool to study. Again, 5 million tons is being burnt up every second. And if we could trap that amount of energy from the sun, just one second, uh, it could power all of the Earth's needs for the next 500,000 years. So if the sun's been losing 5 million tons of mass every second by burning hydrogen into helium, well, how much mass has it lost? So let's do that math. So we got 5 million tons every second it's being lost for the last four and a half billion years, which gives you an incredibly large number. It's hard to even imagine with 23 uh, zeros past it. Well, let's compare that to something that we have a vague understanding about. We know the Earth is really big compared to us, which means it's really massive. And the mass of the uh, Earth is six times 10 to the 21st tons. All right, well, how many Earths then are in this number? And if you do the math, over the last four and a half billion years, if we use the current numbers and rates of consumption, 
That means the sun has lost a total of 118 Earths in the last four and a half billion years. But the idea is that the sun is so much more massive than the Earth that this is a small percentage of it. And it'll continue to burn this uh, amount of mass every second for the next four and a half billion years or so until something else happens. So that's the end of Vodcast 1. And make sure you understand how stars form and this whole process of nuclear fusion.